What goes on in back hallways and behind closed doors at a car dealership? If you've been sitting at a dealer and you notice that the salesman keeps going back and forth to talk to managers, have you ever wondered what's going on? Today, you get answers to that. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, also known as The Homework Guy and author of Is That The Best You Can Do? This video brought to you by YouTube's best channel on car buying and selling, courtesy of The Homework Guy team and our super high intensity training for car buyers. Check the merch shelf below if you want to get one of our cool shirts or hoodies like this one right down below. Car dealers spend a ton of money on advertising and promotion to get you to walk in the door, and they're not going to let you just walk out until they've tried every method and trick in the book to turn you into a customer right now today. Why do they do this? Because less than 20% of you will ever return to a dealership once you've visited. And I recognize that this statistic means that their customer service really sucks. You know that too, but they don't know that. Besides, they don't want to fix that. Instead, it's a high pressure, high stakes game from the very moment you walk in the door and you're going to get worked over for everything they can pry out of your pockets. Now, we're here to talk about those trips your salesman will make to the back hallway or back office and talk to a manager. The whole time the salesman is acting like he's working for you, but that's not really the case. This is really good stuff for you to know, so I hope you take some notes today. Everything discussed in that back hallway is connected to homework that you should have done before you showed up at the dealer. So like I said, take some notes. So what the heck is going on back there? We'll be back with answers to that question right after this short message from the Homework Guy team. If you're a first timer on the Homework Guy channel, consider subscribing and leaving us a comment below. Add hashtag the Homework Guy if you'd like a response directly from Kevin or one of the Homework Guy staff members. We're always glad to help our loyal followers, and the best part is, there's no charge. You can also email the team at info at with a specific question, or if you'd like a free contract review, just black out your personal information and send it to us. We'd love to hear from you. Just be aware that we do get a lot of requests, so just be patient while you wait for a response. Back to you, Kevin. You've probably been scratching your head and wondering why your salesman keeps disappearing and when the little circus is going to end. In most car dealerships, unless the salesman has been working deals, at this specific car lot for years, he or she has no authority to finalize a car deal without authorization from the sales manager. The sales manager, that person hiding in the back hallway, back office, or the desk is controlling everything. That's the real puppet master. The salesperson quite often isn't much more than a pawn for the sales manager to use to manipulate you. It doesn't matter if you're in the dealership or if you're shopping online. You're not negotiating directly with the decision maker. They stay in the background until they think you're ready to roll over and buy or you're ready to walk. This isn't to say you won't be introduced to managers along the way. You will. You just won't negotiate directly with them until it's the right time. So there you are sitting in a dealership and the salesman gets up to go talk to the sales manager. This poor sap is going to get grilled on a variety of topics to help the closer bring it all home. Whether you're shopping online or at the dealership, here's what's being discussed in the back hallways or behind closed doors. Number one, did the customer land on a car? And if so, what is it? That's key to many things, especially what bank they can put you in and how much they can pack into your car deal. Number two, do they intend to lease or buy? If the answer is lease, they want to shut down any other negotiations and send in the lease expert so they can shove you out the door without a single concession on price, fees, or products. Don't get sucked into the idea that leases don't need to be negotiated. Number three, did they go for a test drive? If so, did you ask the closing questions like, can you see yourself driving this home today? Many of you have heard that question. The sales manager wants to know that you have been softened up. Number four, is there a trade? And if so, what is it? And do they know how much to expect for the trade? This question isn't for the purpose of making you happy. Oh no, it's for the purpose of knowing how badly they will disappoint you and what excuses they'll have to come up with for their lowball offer. Number five, does the customer still owe money on their vehicle and if so, how much? They want to know if there's going to be negative equity in this situation. If you were foolish enough to finance over three years last time and didn't put at least 20% cash down, you know, we talk about that all the time in this channel. If you didn't put that much money down and go for the short term, you probably have negative equity in your car deal. Sorry to say, if you did that before, hopefully you'll never do it again. Number six, are they financing or paying cash? If they determine you're paying cash early in the game, watch them shut down the negotiations. See our video titled, Don't Say I'm Paying Cash. Even if you are, you're shooting yourself in the foot in negotiations if you let that out of the bag too early. They are not that excited. 
about saying that you have your own banker either because now they have to compete. Number seven, what's the customer's monthly payment goal? They want to know that the salesman has been following orders and pressing you for information on payments, steering you toward a loan for with the finance manager. Number eight, has their credit been pooled? They want an application on file for you so that they can start bank shopping and they want to know what the options are early in the game. Number nine, did they mention anything about using their own bank? This is kind of self-explanatory. They don't like competing with anyone. Number 10, are we talking to the sole decision maker? And if not, where's the other person? They can't stand it. If your spouse, parent, or any other person you're relying on for help or to make a decision isn't there. They want you pinned down. And this tops the list for pet peeves. So, of course, we recommend that you do it. Number 11. What do we have to do to put a deal down the road today? They want to know about closing questions the salesman is supposed to be asking and what your hot buttons are. Don't forget about the hot buttons. These are the things that distract you and make you think about other things instead of price, fees, big fat payments, and long loan terms that wipe you out. Hot buttons are things that push you to make decisions that can be very bad for you, so be aware of what they are. The dealer is certainly going to be picking on them. There will also be a ton of jokes at your expense, but you'll be saved by never hearing them. It's amazing how much a customer can be disparaged and mocked during this process, but of course, all in the background. Quick recap. What car, lease or buy, test drive, trade in, money owed on the trade, finance or paying cash, payment goal, credit profile, your own bank, decision makers, and hot buttons. It's all part of what was supposed to be your responsibility for homework before you showed up looking for a car. They aren't going to tell you that, but I just did. So I hope you take that to heart and do it. If you didn't take notes on this, go back and also do that. When you don't have a clue on any of these areas, you become a clueless victim of the puppet master known as the sales manager. You see, managers behind the scenes are taking all of this information and putting together a game plan to close you today and on a deal that's the biggest, juiciest deal for them. That's it. The salesman will come back and forth with talking points and we'll throw numbers out to test the waters with you. If you've been watching videos on this channel and you're a bit more savvy than most car buyers, you're going to disappoint them with pushback. Notice your salesman getting nervous and the visits to the sales manager become more frequent. Those conversations in the back hallway start with, well, here's what they're saying now. What do you want me to say next? He's going to come back with specific instructions. This back and forth circus continues as long as you're moving towards what they want. If you get disgusted with this circus act and decide to walk out, watch the salesman suddenly appear. Why? There's a really good chance he or she has been listening in the whole time, right from that handy phone sitting in the built-in intercom on their desk. Yep, eavesdropping is exactly what many do, and they've been listening to you talk every time the salesman gets up to leave you alone for a moment. You never were alone. Assuming things are progressing, you'll soon see a closer. This process and the controls put on the salesman and you, the customer, are there to maximize car sales and more importantly, maximize the profit on every single sale. Don't miss what I said. Maximize the profits in every sale. Car salesmen are often accused of being complete sleaze balls, but I hope you understand now that the sleazy feeling process you just experienced is nothing other than the process taught and enforced by their managers. When you get upset about how you're treated and asked to see a manager, well, you're asking to see the very person who ordered the mistreatment. If you ask to see the owner and they agree to see you, you're asking to speak to the person who paid for all the training the salesmen receive and who put all the pressure on the sales managers to do exactly what they did to you. Nobody operates on their own. Everyone in every dealership is simply doing what the owner wants them to do. The salesman does what the sales managers want them to do. The sales managers do what the owner wants them to do. If they are playing games and screwing you over, it's time to get up and walk. It's only going to get worse from here. You haven't even been to finance yet, and that's the most ruthless person you'll ever find at a car dealership. It's time to just get up and walk. On a closing note, getting up and walking was one of the top strategies I suggest you deploy when negotiations stall or games are being played. Salesmen get fired when that happens, especially if the sales manager didn't catch you first. Get up and walk and watch them chase you, begging for one more chance to treat you right. And if you do make it home, don't be surprised if your phone starts ringing. It's amazing how much more they want to help you when they no longer have control over you. All right, if you appreciated the video today, consider giving us a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Include hashtag the homework guy. Share the video on social media with your friends and family and make sure to join us on Facebook and Twitter too. 
We post notifications and other updates on our other social media sites and can answer car buyer questions there too. If you love what we do and want to say thanks with the tip, PayPal and the Cash App links that you see here in the box will be easy to find in that description box down below. This is just one of the ways the Homework Guide team helps to fund the production behind the scenes work to make our videos possible. So thanks in advance for your support. We've helped millions of car buyers with videos, feedback on your questions, and much more. You noticed we often produce videos from questions posed right here in the comments section by our viewers, and we'll always have your back with great content. Thanks everyone for coming back. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter. Until next time, take care, everyone.